Hi, welcome. So, uh, we will continue discussion on uh, guided mode solutions for slab waveguides. Okay. So, uh, same reference, we have the, this is your z axis, x axis, y axis, just you consider as the uh, perpendicular to the screen. Now, this uh, region from x greater than 0 to h, we are considering waveguide core. In case of silicon on insulator, we call that as a device layer. Device layer and upper cladding, it can be silicon dioxide or air that is greater than h and this is typically silicon dioxide, we call it as a buried oxide refractive index N s and device layer refractive index N d typical this is a silicon basically crystalline silicon and uh, N c is the refractive index of the top cladding N c we define. So, it is obvious that at any wavelength particularly we are considering lambda equal to 15 50 nanometer that is the communication wavelength and uh, third, third, communica third generation communication wavelength at that particular wavelength uh, the device layer refractive index is 3.4778 and uh, silicon dioxide or box layer we call it as a NS is refractive index at 15 50 nanometer as well 1.4657 and top cladding in this case we are considering air so that I can have asymmetric cladding in general any point you can put N D equal to N, NS equal to N C also you can cover can be oxide also. So, far so good. So, then we uh, discussed the how to solve uh, by using the ray optics model, uh, we could arrive to this uh, so called uh, Eigen solution and we in this discussion, today's discussion specifically we will be call, we will be discussing only on T e polarization. We know that there are two types of polarization T and T m specifically for T e polarization uh, E y component will be dominating and magnetic field will be in the exit plane in the plane of the screen we have shown earlier figure and that is why you have H x component A z component. So, that is how we will be calling T and T m polarization also you can because they are they are basically identical uh, situation. So, we do not need to worry about just concentrate focus on only one polarization and understand everything then we can go for we can easily extract what would be the result for the T m polarization. So, and in this case you see uh, this N d refractive index coming uh, like a device layer and lambda is the uh, wavelength operating wavelength and h is the device layer thickness as mentioned and phi l is the phase change happens uh, at the lower interface when this theta is greater than lower critical angle. So, uh, lower interface critical angle theta c u and this theta must be greater than theta c u then you, un, you uh, get some certain kind of um, polarization that is sorry. Uh, phi u, I am talking about phi u, phi u is the upper and uh, phi l is the uh, lower phase and uh, uh, phase because of the total internal reflection and they are defined phi u upper interface, you can define for T e polarization this one and for T m polarization uh, sorry for T e polarization again lower interface, uh, it is as a function of theta, but of course, whenever I am talking about uh, upper interface, then theta must be less than 90 degree, but greater than the critical angle at the upper interface. Then whatever phase change takes place in the upper interface, this is the case and for lower interface similar expression only thing is that N d N s and N c will be uh, interchanged. Okay. So, here also we see that theta must be greater than the uh, critical angle at the lower interface. For our silicon operating at uh, silicon on insulator operating at 15 50 nanometer, if we consider these refractive indices, then critical angle at the upper interface is 17 degree. If you just calculate simple formula, 
uh, snail's law coming out of snail's law. So, theta c u equal to uh, sin inverse of n c divided by n d. So, that is the critical angle for soy uh, slab waveguide at the upper interface when upper cladding is er. n c I have considered here 1, n d as here. So, similarly for lower cladding the critical angle will be uh, n s by n d. So, this is again since n s is higher than n c, n c here. So, this lower uh, uh, interface the critical angle will be higher than the uh, upper interface critical angle here we find it is 25 degree approximately 25 degree slightly less than 25 this is also slightly less than 17 degree we just rounded it ok. So, now we know that we have to have uh, some solutions for theta and this theta solution comes this is a transcendental equation both side theta is there phi l theta expression is this one and phi u theta expression is this one. So, both side theta is there and if I consider this m value that can run from integer 0, 1, 2, 3 so on and one, once we put 0 we get one solution, once we get 1 we get another solution, once we get 2 another solution and so on. How we did here? So, we try to consider this one as a left hand side and entire th three terms that has a right hand side. We can plot left hand side as a function of theta and right hand side also function of theta for each value of m, then intersections will be the solution. For example, left hand side if I plot here, this is the curve, this is a cosine function as a function of theta, this is your theta in degree if you are showing 0 to 90 degree, this is your 90 degree. Then you see left hand side will be cosine function at theta equal to 0 that will be maximum. So, this value is nothing but uh, whatever value you get 2 pi by lambda n d and cos 0, cos 0 and h, h in this case we consider about 1 micrometer multiplied by h. So, 1 micrometer whatever value comes and lambda if we put 15, 15 nanometer whatever value comes this is the value by axis it is coming left hand side I am just talking. Then cosine function as a function of theta it will be reducing to 0 at 90 degree. So, left hand side is fine and right hand side what we can get? We can get a series of expressions series of curves just uh, by changing m values m equal to 0 we get this one this expression this is m equal to 0 that means, this first term will be 0 the whatever value comes here that is the total value we are considering here ok and m equal to 1 this one m equal to 1 it is written here this is actually m equal to 2 this is actually m equal to 3. So, we have 4 curves m equal to 0 to 3 that is there are 4 curves and we clearly see that that the left hand side and right hand side is intersecting at this point that means, when m equal to 0. So, corresponding theta is the theta naught that is the one solution. Similarly, whenever m 1 we get this curve. So, we get corresponding theta value solution theta 1 here m equal to 2 corresponding theta 2 value and m equal to 3 corresponding theta 3 value. And in this curve you see here we have shown what where is the position of theta C L and where is the position of theta C U. Theta C U 17 degree theta C L 25 degree. So, 25 degree between 20 here somewhere theta C L and theta C U. And if you see this expression this phi L expression comes when theta greater than theta C L. So, greater than theta C L we are adding this one, but in between theta when starting from theta is greater than theta C U to theta C L only this expression right hand side will be 0 this one will be 0. So, in this range when theta C u uh, less than theta less than theta C l in this range because this theta is less than theta C l. So, this will be 0 this phi l part will be 0. So, only this part. So, we get only this part corresponding to upper interface ok. So, that phase and once theta crosses theta C l then you, you will be adding one value here and values also here both the values will be adding that is why you get a kink here. So, exactly at theta equal to theta C L that time actually you are adding the phi L term that is why you are getting a kink and before that 
uh, you have only this term. So, every everywhere when m equal to 1 that means you are adding pi here pi to this curve. So, you are getting this one this m equal to 2 again 2 pi 3 pi so on you are getting. So, what I understand that for h equal to 1 micrometer we have one solution for m equal to 0, second solution for m equal to 1, third solution for m equal to 2, fourth solution equal to m 3. We could solve one more m equal to 4, but in that case if I just add maybe somewhere 12 this one you are getting somewhere here you will be getting something like this type of curve. So, what we get this solution if you see this solution coming is lower than this whatever theta value theta 4 would be coming that is lower than the theta C L. So, that means at that particular angle you would not see total internal reflection at the lower interface. So, that is not a guiding mode that is why we reject it. So, we clearly find that there are 4 solutions are there ok. 4 4 theta naught solutions will be there. So, that means there are 4 modes will be you will find 4 modes 4 different type of standing wave will be generated along the vertical direction in the uh, uh, slab wave guide we have shown earlier ok. So, you could do that thing ok. Why you need to consider h equal to 1 micrometer? You could increase more h equal to if h you are increasing. So, this curve will be coming somewhere here it will be starting from somewhere here. So, that means you would add more number of modes. So, thickness is more means you are allowing more number of modes and if you can reduce the thickness you can actually reduce the number of modes. For example, if you consider this is suppose somewhere 14 suppose you are consider say uh, 4 times lower. So, about uh, uh, 3 point something somewhere here you are considering. So, h equal to uh, about 250 nanometer for example, if you are considering 0 0.25 4 times then this value will be 4 times lower. So, you will be getting some curves left hand side curve will be like this ok. So, left hand curve will be this then you would be getting one solution here that is corresponding to your theta naught and next solution you would have would, would have been getting here that is actually lower than the critical angle. So, if you are considering 250 nanometer uh, device layer thickness then you would end up only one solution here only one mode will be supported. So, that is the reason uh, whenever you are talking about uh, uh, silicon photonics uh, on silicon on insulator platform you consider around 250 nanometer device layer thickness where you can actually at least support one mode particular mode. And if it is lower than that also you will be getting some mode that is also fine lower than 250 nanometer also you will be getting a solutions also. So, with this once we know the solutions all the theta naught values theta m we are finding theta m must be somewhere greater than theta critical angle at the lower interface between 90. So, that is what we mentioned here and we know we have defined in a effective index of the guided mode for the mth solution n effective m is nothing but n d sin theta m. So, one you put theta value then you get effective index of the uh, m equal to 0 if you put theta naught then corresponding you will be getting n effective 0. A m equal to 1 theta 1 ex solutions you are getting you will be getting n effective 1 something like that. And since this is the condition holds we find there they are directly theta C L if we just consider sin inverse something like that n s by n d if you are putting that then you are getting n effective m must be less than equal to n d or greater than equal to n s. So, effective indices of the guided mode when you obtain that must be greater less than refractive index of the device layer, but greater than the refractive index of the uh, substrate or box layer that is what we have shown here now that is the substrate n d. So, you get a mode propagating that propagating mode will see effective index that will be less than that will be less than n d and n effective and it should be greater than n s somewhere. Any solutions you are getting less than n s that, that means, the light will be not confined it will be leaking that is what our understanding so far ok. Now, let us uh, put down the numbers theta not value whatever solutions we get according to there this is 76.99 degree. Theta 1 is lower as you see here for higher order mode theta naught is highest theta 1. So, that means, I can say that theta naught is higher than theta 1 
is higher than theta 2, higher than theta 3. So, that means, n effective naught will be higher and n effective 1 will be next higher and so on. Okay. So, accordingly all the theta values are there and it is descending order, they are higher order modes and if you calculate the n effective that is nothing but n d sin theta m. So, this is the theta m you are putting n effective naught you are getting and then you are putting this value then you are getting this value. So, reducing theta is re theta value reducing n effective value will be reducing theta solutions will be reducing n effective will be reducing. So, different mode will have different refractive indices of course, this is greater than this one greater than this one then this is the. So, as you go for higher order modes you can see their effective indexes uh, will be dropping that is one thing we understand. Okay. Now, next thing. So, here I want to discuss a very nice uh, thing. Uh, suppose we know this is the h equal to suppose 1 micrometer device layer, this is your device layer, this is a silicon on insulator, it is a box below and top is the cladding something like that. So, this is some portion I am just showing the silicon or so we or so we silicon on insulator we are showing that is where refractive index is nd. And if I just consider that okay, your wafer or device is ending here, this is the end point, you clipped this side, left hand side you clipped, you polished. Then right hand side you can say that your substrate is there. Okay. So, in that case your uh, uh, it is possible that there are uh, four different modes will be supported, four modes will be supported and each of the modes they will give some kind of fundamental mode for example, that this type of profile and say higher order mode it will be like this and something like that. So, on you will be getting, okay. so uh, higher order mode will be like this, suppose you consider like this, higher order mode will be like this, okay. this is a fundamental mode and so on, mode, uh, modes will be there. But thing is that uh, each of mode, each mode actually assigned in ray optics picture, this is standing wave we are saying in the lateral direction, but standing that is standing wave picture you will be getting some kind of field distribution in the x direction. But we have a solid concrete uh, solution for theta, where you see that some kind of total internal reflection will be taking place for a certain mode, that means theta naught, if it is theta naught then it will be uh, fundamental mode, so, but if it is coming like this theta 1, no theta 1 is less. So, theta 1 is like this, this is your theta 1, then it is the higher order mode and so on. But one interesting point you just consider, suppose you are launching light from this side and you are interested to set one of this angle theta naught or theta 1 or theta 2 and theta 3. Obviously, if I consider our ray optics picture, suppose I am signing in this direction with a theta a angle, then what happens? this is the interface and in the interface this is your normal and this is your incident angle for example. Then what is the refracted angle that I will get from the snail's law n suppose n a r this side your refractive index is n a r n a r sin theta a suppose this is something like that theta r equal to n d sin theta r. Right. So, this theta r is decided by the uh, angle of incident theta a here and theta r obviously is nothing but 90 minus theta. Suppose, this is theta I have defined 90 minus theta. So, that is why we are written the Snell's law n a r sin theta a n d sin 90 minus theta. Okay. So, now if you put this n 90 minus theta means cos theta comes cos theta. So, that means, I have n a r, n a r refractive index is 1, right. So, that means sin theta a equal to n d equal to 3.47478 that is what we have written here and cos theta. So, this is the expression. Now, if I try to calculate, suppose I want to get a theta naught whether it is possible or not and it is clear that from this expression. So, when I write sin theta a better it is written here 3.4778 
cos theta. So, this is a constant. Now, theta is more than this cos theta term when theta a is more according to this relationship this theta will be less. Theta a if you are increasing theta a increasing theta, theta a increasing theta will be decreasing. If this angle is keep on increasing this theta a theta express this angle this angle according to the Snell's law that will be decreasing. What is the maximum possible value of theta a? Maximum possible value of theta a is 90 degree. So, theta a can be 0 to 90 degree because I can sign directly and I can increase increase I can go 90 degree theta a can be maximum 90 degree. Okay. So, when theta a is maxima whatever solution I will get from Snell's law theta will be when theta is maxima then theta will be minimum that is what I have written. If theta a is 90 degree maximum then theta will be minimum and what is that minimum value let us consider the according to this expression theta 90 degree you are putting. So, this theta value will be cos inverse 1 over 3.4778 according to this expression you are writing and that is 73 degree. So, I can consider theta a value as maximum as 90 degree as highest as 90 degree not more than that and I know that higher the theta a higher the theta a lower will be the theta value. So, highest will be the theta a x value lowest will be the theta value highest value 90 degree. So, lowest value of theta is 73 degree. So, I can have if I sign light from air to create some total internal reflection in the both interface. So, that light can enter and then once it enters it should go undergo some total internal reflections. But practically what we see that this theta cannot be less than 73 degree. Okay. So, it will be minimum value is 73 degree. When minimum value is 73 degree can you achieve 66 degree? No. Can you achieve 53 degree theta 2? No. Can you achieve theta 3? No. You will be only achieving theta naught. So, that is a puzzle your device layer that can support four modes according to the ray optics model. But what you see practically if you are launching at an angle from the air so that you can excite selectively some theta that is that is the particular theta value it can actually support some guided mode according to our ray optics model. But unfortunately in this example in this example we cannot actually excite higher order modes in spite of their solutions are there. So, this is something it is a limitation of it is kind of I mentioned here this is definitely a major limitation of ray optics model. In principle in practice we can couple all the modes if you sign light you can couple laser light if you sign from this side there is a, it is obviously possible you can excite all the higher order modes. But whenever you are signing from the left whatever angle you get bring in your light it can be diverging source it can be some Gaussian or whatever whatever k wave vector is there from the source it cannot be theta a this angle cannot be greater than 90 it, it will be between 0 to 90 degree plus minus 90 degree. If it is plus minus 0 to 90 degree the maximum possible angle you can get 73 degree. Of course, this 73 degree here whatever you get that is max higher than the uh, critical angle both at the upper interface at the lower interface total internal reflection takes place, but those values all the angles will not give you standing wave only selective angles. So, theta naught is possible somehow you can change you can reduce a bit this theta uh, uh, a value then instead of theta maximum 73 degree it, it will be it will be little bit higher 76.9 degree. So, this is the minimum you can little bit make higher than 73 degree 76 degree that is possible. This is for a certain example if you just consider 
uh, h the device layer thickness is different the scenario, scenario will be different okay so in that case i would say that ray optics model we can explain that okay there are modes there are effective indices and uh, propagation constant and they will be having different phase velocity they can propagate support everything fine but if you just consider how to couple all these modes this ray optics model that is actually something is difficult to achieve excitation but practically it is possible that is the reason this ray optics model is failing for explaining everything okay first of all this uh, somehow you can think of that whenever you are launching a light you are considering a plane wave is coming and plane wave is going it is a macroscopically homogeneous medium that is why uh, it is a coupling happening Snell's law Maxwell's equation everything consider. But ultimately what happens practically you can think of when well, electromagnetic wave comes from air or free space or from another medium and reaching here in this medium light matter interaction happens actually in internal constituents constituents of the atoms molecules they actually uh, re uh, respond to your incoming electro electromagnetic wave that starts their electrons are uh, kind of thing electrons will be a little bit uh, loosely attached to all nucleus and they will start oscillating and that oscillations that means electron oscillation around a nucleus that will create some kind of dipole uh, and those dipole oscillations they will be depending on their orientation they will actually radiate like antenna electromagnetic wave all around all direction inside the material. So, you can in principle get all the uh, theta angles inside because of this the scattering dipole antenna or light scattering inside the crystal uh, that can be uh, considered simple ray optics model if you consider you will not be able to explain whether higher order modes will be excited or not in this particular example this is a kind of one kind of limitation I wanted to explain. So, we need some kind of alternative solutions ok alternative solution is it is better to again go back and consult with your Maxwell's equations and see if it is, if there are some additional thing we can think of uh, consider so that we can explain all the modes how more solutions as well as how light will be coupled directly into the uh, all the excited modes all the all the supported modes ok. So, this is one important thing you should keep in mind cool. So, as I mentioned that we have to go back to your Maxwell's equations and uh, from Maxwell's equations to full vectorial wave equations we just try to derive I will just go through very quickly because I assume that all of you uh, when you take this course you have some kind of basic knowledge of Maxwell's equations I have discussed already earlier I just repeat again that when you consider Maxwell's equation you have to consider displacement vector and you have to consider uh, uh, magnetic field induction magnetic field strength B and they are related with a material medium if it is epsilon is the dielectric uh, or so here in this case we will be considering this epsilon as a permeabil permittivity and that permittivity can be space dependent <coughs> and that permittivity actually will be associated with the electric field and electric field if it is uh, also space dependent x y z and time dependent and we consider at this point that epsilon is the just only space dependent no time dependent thing uh, the simple consideration we consider here then d equal to epsilon e basically when e is x y z t I can consider d also x y z t that is that is it nothing else. And then this is permittivity if we just consider uh, epsilon 0 as the constant permittivity for the free space then with relative to uh, uh, free space uh, what is the uh, permittivity of the medium we just scale it like epsilon r called a relative permittivity or dielectric constant and basically since this is a free space thing and you can uh, assign epsilon r as a space dependent and this one. So, this is d equal to basically we write d equal to epsilon e that is what I have written and similarly b equal to mu h and mu naught h because most of the uh, optical waveguide dielectric medium we consider they are non magnetic ok. And uh, if you just consider like Carl e equal to uh, minus del b del t. Okay, minus del b del t del del t we know that all the electric field and magnetic field if they are just 
oscillating with e to the j omega t. So, del del t as a operator we just simply write j omega. So, first curl equation we write curl E equal to minus j omega b and another is curl B dielectric medium sigma equal to 0 we are considering that is actually epsilon del d del t time dependent del del t and d equal to epsilon. So, we can write j omega epsilon and uh, uh, curl B is equal to uh, I think this is one mistake is there this mu 0 should not be there ok epsilon del d del t oh no normally that is curl h that is correct then that is correct uh, mu 0 will be there. So, basically we know curl h equal to epsilon uh, sorry del d del t j plus del d del t. So, j means sigma e sigma equal to 0 that is why you consider that is not there only del d del t. So, del d del t del del t is omega. So, whenever I am writing b here that means I am just multiplying mu naught this side. So, this side also I have to multiply mu naught that is why mu naught is there. So, j omega comes because of the del del t and epsilon e this expression comes ok. Little bit fresh it make it fresh ok. So, I have this one curl b and this is the curl d. Now, we assume that for wave guide uh, consideration this epsilon r is x y z dependent. This is not a homogeneous medium I can consider this is a inhomogeneous somehow because for wave guide you know three layer structures are there. So, I can consider homogeneous structure at least in x direction in one d wave guide homo inhomogeneous structure. So, simply divergence d we know that is actually rho v if it is charge free then we consider 0 and divergence d epsilon e it is 0. If epsilon is constant I could take del means normally you know del del x plus a y del del y plus a z del del z you means partial derivative required. If this is a constant homogeneous medium then epsilon could be taken outside then you could get epsilon del E equal to 0 you could easily write divergence e equal to 0 right because epsilon is a factor that would be 0. But in this case because we will be considering wave guide structure etcetera. So, epsilon r will be space dependent uh, uh, etcetera will be there. So, that is the reason we will not uh, we cannot take this epsilon outside instead rather we write like this epsilon r inside and if it is inside suppose a function this is a field function this is also x y z dependent and E also x y z dependent then we can just write from the vector identity easily we can write this one ok. So, epsilon r divergence of E plus E dot del epsilon r you know any scalar quantity if it is a space dependent if you take a gradient that will become vector. So, E dot del epsilon 0 so that is equal to 0 and from here if you just try to find out this you will be getting easily divergence of E equal to say E dot del epsilon 0 by r we are writing like this ok. Let us clean a bit ok. Now, another thing also you can just think of divergence b equal to 0 always. So, since it is a non magnetic material mu r equal to 1 mu r can be taken out. So, divergence h equal to 0 ok. So, we go back ok. So, now you check what we get from this expression this is the expression I take one more curl both side that is what we know taking curl from both side we try to decouple. So, now eliminating b from two curl equation and using the expression this one this expression will be using. So, how to eliminate we have to take curl because if you take curl this side will be curl of b this curl of b can be replaced here. So, that is the goal objective. So, if you just simply follow it this will be left hand side left hand side can be written like this this one is like this ok according to the a cross b cross c that in, uh, vector identity you can write like that. And right hand side curl of b you are putting like this and here mu 0 epsilon 0 you are just writing like a 1 by c square mu 0 epsilon 0 is there ok 1 by c square and omega j omega is there one more j omega minus sign minus sign plus. So, omega square by c square. So, right hand side if you are putting that is actually only electric field expression for the electric field 
Okay. Now, earlier for homogeneous medium, we could easily put divergence equal to 0. Now, we cannot because we will be dealing with inhomogeneous medium and that is why we have to put divergence e value according to this one. Obviously, if this is a constant space independent that part will be 0 that is fine as whenever you can consider that that time you can put down 0 that is all right. So, here uh, what we are doing this divergence e if you put this term will come and del square e will be there del square e right minus sign is there. So, minus sign will be plus this side will come this is minus sign and this is also coming this side back side. So, ultimately all this thing you are just simplifying that straight forward all the terms if you put in uh, left hand side. So, ultimately you get this one. Okay. So, for homogeneous dielectric medium this will be 0 we can write uh, this thing. Okay. Now, so this is actually called vector wave equation for electric field vector wave equation this is all our vector not nothing is scalar it is a still wave equation we will show that anything we want to solve in an inhomogeneous medium we have to start from here because practically you have to deal with inhomogeneous medium also. So, sometimes this thing has to be directly started instead of so far in electromagnetic theory any textbook you have already dealt with only homogeneous medium where delta epsilon are equal to 0. Now, we have to deal with inhomogeneous thing. Okay. So, we have to start from here all the time. Now, same thing if I uh, eliminate B from the Carl equations these are the two Carl equation again if you want to eliminate B then what we have to do you have to take Carl for the both side then once you get Carl of E this side you are getting with simple few steps you just put down here straight forward here. So, again left hand side will be like this and right hand side again you see Carl of uh, epsilon R E epsilon r is since it is uh, x y z dependent. So, Carl of e epsilon r cannot be kept outside. So, you have to put whenever you are taking Carl that epsilon r has to be multiplied with the e then only you can get epsilon r cannot be taken outside. Okay. So, if you do not take outside then you can actually this is also function of x y z if you are thinking if you have then you can write down from the vector identity we can write like this. Okay j omega by c square we are writing here we could write also this mu 0 epsilon 0 c square here instead of c square here this c square should be here right okay j omega by c square mu 0 epsilon 0 plus. Now, divergence b equal to 0 that is already there. So, there you do not need to bother because mu r again I say that mu r is not it is a non magnetic material. So, it is um, magnetic point of view it is homogeneous. So, again uh, by simplification this one little bit simplification because here is this E this E can be written like this E I can derive from here you have a Carl de delta epsilon r uh, cross E the E I can take from here I can replace here then I will be getting this expression okay. and this one I will be writing here. Okay. So, uh, Carl of E, Carl of E I, I know what is the value minus j omega b that is minus j omega b written simplification you get this one. This is called actually your uh, vector, wave, vector wave equation for magnetic field in terms of b here written. So, anywhere you can just make uh, it is a homogeneous media del epsilon r will be again 0. So, then you are getting the vector wave equation for the homogeneous dielectric medium good. So, now, now come back if I consider the homogeneous media 3 media. So, if I have silicon on insulator slab again here and so, E device layer is uh, actually this one x uh, greater than 0 greater than h this is a silicon with a refractive index n d. So, from here to here it is a homogeneous medium of silicon and lower also it is a homogeneous medium of silicon dioxide this is silicon dioxide this is silicon homogeneous media and this is again your uh, what you call that air with refractivity and c cladding or it can be silicon dioxide homogeneous media. So, vertical direction you have a three layer stacks of homogeneous medium. So, if I want to deal with our uh, equation wave equation for homogeneous media I can consider three different equation satisfying this medium, this medium, this medium separately only in the boundary they are getting a dielectric constant change here interface dielectric constant change is happening. So, for uh, electric field wave equation I can write like this 3 medium 
I, for example, if you see here, this one epsilon r, this is the magnetic field, and this is your electric field. Epsilon r is there. So this epsilon r is basically n square, n square n equal to square root of epsilon r. So three medium is there. So in this medium, this is epsilon epsilon dr, and this is epsilon cr, cladding region, and this is epsilon sr. So if instead of epsilon r, we are just putting down refractive index. You know, dielectric medium only uh, whenever you are considering dielectric uh, medium source free. So instead of uh, epsilon mu, sigma, all those type of refractive index only the uh, deciding uh, parameter for electromagnetic propagation, wave propagation. So we have just written down in three medium. Only thing is that this refractive index will be different. Then fine. Okay. Now clean up. Good. So, let us see what happens. I consider that my solution for T polarization, the mode is like this electromagnetic mode uh, EXYZ, you have only Y component T polarization and you have magnetic field XZ, magnetic field will be in the XZ plane. Similarly, for TM polarization, we know your magnetic field will be in the y direction tangential component and electric field in the xz plane array optics model we discussed that and in this case if we just consider our electric field is having only one component ui component and from our ray optics picture we know that this electric field will be somehow it will have some kind of distribution x dependent distribution will be there along x direction so this is x dependent and it will be propagating along z direction we consider that z direction propagation constant is beta and here also for magnetic field only y component we are considering here okay that is also h y x dependent and beta z good so now next thing is that uh, we know that this is the solution for electric field here and this is the solution for only component magnetic field here and other component for t polarization h x and h z we can directly use our carl equation to find i will show that later and here also similarly, once we get a h y, then I can get a e x and e z from the Maxwell's equations. Okay. Now, continuity for tangential components, T polarization, E has only u i component, correct, true, T m polarization only h y component, true, this is fine. Okay. Now, what else? You just think about that. If I just use the electric field equation here okay electric field equation i just only write, write there previously what i have write written this e will be directly it will be written as ey component here okay similarly here h i can write hy for tm polarization i can use this one and for t polarization i can use this field only electric field equation magnetic they are identical basically identical equation once you know how to solve this one you know what would be the solutions for all these so three medium i am writing separately and this three medium separately i am writing because if i get a solution here and i get a solution here i know that they will be this solution and this solution will be same in the boundary there will be continuity t polarization e y is the tangential component that will be continuous and uh, for TM polarization, HY is the uh, tangential component, they will be continuous. So, whatever solutions I will be getting here, because of the HY, I will be getting here HY. If I put X equal to H, they will be identical. Okay. So, I have just written EY. EY here, del square EY and del square EY, del square EY, only difference NC, ND, NS, three different media, NC, ND, NS. Right? So, now, it is no more a uh, vector equation. It is like a, you see, you do not need to consider only one component here, one component, only one component magnetic field. So, you can treat them like a scalar. And in this scalar, if you just consider this frame, this is x axis, this is z axis, and along y direction, it is infinitely extended. So, in that case, I can write nothing is changing in this direction. So, here, if you see this one, this one del y del 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 y i am just concerned because y direction what is happening i don't need to bother i can consider everything is fixed in that direction i can assume so del del y equal to 0 that means del del 2 y 2 del 2 del y 2 equal to 0 
and in case of del del z because z dependence is, is this minus beta z is there ok. So, del del z del e del z if you just put you will be getting minus j beta. So, that is what we have written here and if you take double derivative with respect to z it will be beta square. So, we know that this del square is equal to del 2 del x 2 plus del 2 del y 2 plus del 2 del z 2. So, this one equal to 0 I consider and this one I consider is minus beta square and this one will be staying. So, u i component I can finally, this del square instead of del square I will be just only dealing with this one for one d wave guide. This one I can put here and del del z 2 I can put minus beta square ok. So, we can treat as a scalar wave equation that is what I mentioned we can treat them independently that is why let us uh, go ahead a little bit both the TETM polarization is same and if I just consider that this thing this beta equal to beta square is there that I put down here I can write a little bit simplification the left hand side I can write like this right hand side I can write like this left hand side for T polarization uh, UI component this is for HY component for two different polarization T polarization one mode T m polarization another type of solutions we can consider ok. So, this thing beta square you see omega omega by c n effective we are considered like a beta. So, instead of beta square I will be writing n effective square and minus beta square minus it will be there. So, that is the reason this is coming along with this omega square by c square epsilon r n d square was there this term up to here it will be there and then beta will be writing. So, simply for x uh, T polarization, T m polarization identical equations if you see ok, straightforward. Now, now let us let us focus only on T polarization that means, we have U i component ok and you have H field is X z plane just only T focus on and this is the scalar wave equation for the cladding layer scalar wave equation for U i component is the core region device layer scalar wave equation for the uh, substrate region. So, straight forward directly I am coming from the uh, Maxwell's uh, wave equations vector wave equation now it is converted into scalar homogeneous medium three different independent line treating uh, cover region and core region and substrate region. So, only difference is that everywhere I have used n effective n effective n effective because everywhere any field is existing for a mode the beta value this beta value is same for everywhere. Do not forget that this beta is nothing but uh, beta is nothing but omega by c n effective ok. That means, 2 pi by lambda times n effective propagation constant. So, if it is propagating as a mode or whatever, so that in effective I have just consider in terms of beta that is that is the consideration we have considered. Though it is unknown we need to solve that you should keep in mind. N effective what type of N effective solutions I will be getting for example, in ray optics model what we got we try to solve theta and then from theta we try to solve your N effective and then beta so on. Now, yeah. So, uh, we know from the uh, total internal reflection model here ok. What is that? Uh, the beta m equal to 2 pi by lambda n effective. So, this n effective m equal to we consider there n effective m equal to say n d sin theta m. We do not want to consider this theta m we are just without theta m we are trying to get a solutions ok. So, what is that? Omega by c n effective. So, I can say that n effective is less than n d this is the consideration I have already there earlier discussion. So, for any guided mode, so for any guided mode we can write in general beta equal to omega by c n effective that is what I am keep on talking and if n effective must be less than n d and c same thing I am repeating just so that uh, things are consistent ok. So, now let us define to solve I need to solve this equation, this equation and this equation all are identical equation only thing is that here n c square, n d square, n s square this three region difference is like that. But we know that this n effective is in between n d and n s this is the case ok. So, if I just compare this thing, this thing 
with re, you just compare n effective with respect to nc n effective with respect to nd n effective with respect to ns you know that n effective this one is greater than ns n effective is greater than ns right and there n effective is less than nd n effective is greater than nc so that means once this is greater than this one that means this value is negative but this is less than nd so this is positive but this is negative so what we consider we define positive real quantities kappa c kappa d kappa s what is kappa c you know that n effective greater than nc we define like this just i try to uh, express this thing particularly all this thing n effective is the unknown thing but i am defining with this expression this is also positive because n effective greater than n effective less than nd n effective greater than ns right so if i just use this expression here that means instead of this one i'll be writing minus kappa c square ey and here i'll be writing plus kappa d square ey and here i'll be writing minus kappa s square e y. So, if I define this thing where omega c and n c, n s, n d are known only n effective common in all the expression that is unknown we want to solve that. Okay. So, this is that with this definition we will just define this expression will come like this, this expression will come like this, this expression will come like this and everywhere I just define same thing again whatever I discussed this one. And of course, beta equal to omega by c n effective. By the way, we are not considering n effective m in this case because I do not know how many modes will be there. If the n effective will be discretized or they will be continuous, it is not because ray optics model we saw that that n effective will be discretized because theta is discretized. But in this case, we know that okay, some confinement will be there along x direction and some propagation wave vector phase, uh, phase velocity everything will be there in the z direction that concept we, we will be following. However, however, what I see that uh, this thing is propagating along z direction, but uh, n effective and n d uh, relationship depending on that thing these are actually described and n effective instead of n effective m I just consider n effective m normally n effective whenever I am getting solution that time we will see whether that will be discretized or not. Okay. Now, you see this is the uh, equation we are considering in the previous slide. If you just check this one, kappa c is positive. If I try to solve this one, what would be the solution? It is like a exponential decaying uh, solution it will be there. And what will be this solution? This is plus, this will be oscillating and we have just solution like a oscillating cosine function or sine function anything we can consider and only thing is that you introduce one. Uh, some kind of phase uh, kappa d x minus phi s this phi s uh, in again we are introducing additional constant we need to solve that of course and some amplitude e c here i am considering similarly this one because this side k c k s both are positive but this is coming negative and this is positive so only central solution in this region that will be oscillatory that means like a standing wave and uh, here because it will be kappa d will be plus minus so, on solutions will be there just standard first order second order differential equation you solve this and this is for x equal to 0 we are considering also uh, because I will not consider uh, amplifying uh, here also plus minus kappa s plus minus kappa c will be there, but uh, plus sign will not be considered here because plus sign means it is actually exponentially increasing in the cladding region field cannot be increasing uh, without amplification etcetera. But here also it is decaying, but x is since it is x less than 0, so negative sign will come, so it is actually decaying only this is standing wave solutions. So, from the uh, wave uh, vector wave equation we just come out with this type of solutions. Obviously, I am just carrying this thing because that will be useful for further discussion and then these are the solutions for three regions right three region solutions all these three things if they are part of this mode e y x right and here e y x y that is part of this mode all of them should travel with the this phasor form that means the phase velocity of these three solutions phase velocity and that will be always seeing the longitudinal direction beta 
propagation constant which is I discussed earlier that is actually k k 1 z in ray optics model that beta is coming. So, that will be propagating with this phase velocity all of them should be multiplied by this phase factor that should be kept in mind. Okay. Now, in this equation what are unknown things we have introduced n effective phi s E c E d E s E c E d E s these are the unknowns we need to solve them. Okay. So, that is actually uh, the uh, next target we have to solve because you see this is the solution here which is actually true for x greater than h this region because this region differential equation you can consider homogeneous medium and differential equation this one. And from here to here homogeneous medium with a differential equation like this homogeneous media with a differential equation like this and all of their solution individually in each uh, homogeneous medium you find and since they are I, I am trying to solve a mode which is actually propagating along z direction and these solutions are associated to that particular mode. That means, I have to assume that all this field distribution here and here they that pattern that distribution as a whole that will be traveling in the forward direction with this phase factor and because of the differential equation whatever constants are there we need to know their relationship and at least we should maintain because it is a ui we have to check that ui uh, this is a tangential component ui component if i use this equation and this equation exactly if i put x equal to h they must be same so from there i can try to find out what is the relationship between ec and ed and try to find out all these unknown uh, values okay with this i stop today for this lecture